Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And making headlines this morning, all eyes on the jury in the Derek Chauvin trial as cities across the country get ready for reactions to the upcoming verdict. Plus details on a new push by the White House to get even more Americans vaccinated for COVID-19 as soon as possible. And outside with live cam, if there's anything as a normal day, I guess this would be kind of a normal day. 53 degrees and dark. Hi, good morning. Good it's alert. Tuesday. <laughs> it's nice and dark at, at 4.30 a.m. It's Thank April you, 20th. Man. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. I think I'd be worried if it uh, wasn't dark outside. <laughs> That'd be a problem. That'd be a really big time change. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes, it will. Guys, we are watching a cold front. OK, so this is going to be a big change for us tomorrow. We're in mid-April now. You would think things are starting to get warmer. Not so fast. OK, we've got some cooler temperatures headed our way tomorrow morning. It's going to be in the 40s. We may see some wind chills. Yeah, we're not uh, we're not done with the cool air just yet. It's 31 right now in Amarillo. That is the front shifting south. It'll be here by about dinner time today, and it'll bring about those changes. There are freeze watches and warnings all across North Texas, Oklahoma. And in fact, there is snow flying this morning across parts of Kansas. Just to give you an idea of how cool this air mass is. It's only going to last about a day for us, and we're not going to see freezes or frost here, but temperatures will get down into the mid-40s even here in San Antonio tomorrow morning. Right now, we're seeing 40s on the map. Kerrville, 44, 48, Rock Springs, mid-50s, though, here in town, 48, Pleasanton. And the forecast for today takes us up to about uh, 74 noontime. We'll be in the, the low to mid-80s later today, so it is going to be a warm day. Those changes don't arrive until tonight. On top of that front, we've got some storms potentially to talk about by the end of the work week. We're going to get into all of that coming up here in just a bit. David. Thank you, Justin. This morning, investigators are searching for four suspects. They say were involved in a shooting on the city's west side. Several yellow markers show where a hail of gunfire came down on a home and nearby cars. This happened on Friel City Road near Brady Boulevard. Police say one man was shot in the ankle and taken to the hospital. Investigators say the suspects in this case left the scene in a black four-door Nissan. And Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf says our latest coronavirus numbers is a mis mixed bag. Our positivity rate is still under 5%. It's at 2.2% and 119 new cases were confirmed. There continues to be a slight upwards trend in our hospitals. 236 COVID-19 patients are being treated. 93 are in the intensive care unit and 38 are on ventilators. And Bear County has officially administered over 1 million doses of the COVID-19 vaccine. If you are not part of that group that has received a shot, you have an opportunity today. Sarah Coast is live downtown. How you can roll up your sleeve today for a vaccine. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, David. And if you haven't gotten your COVID-19 vaccine, to, you can do so today at the Alamo Dome. They are having a clinic without appointments needed this afternoon. Mayor Ron Nirenberg continues to urge everyone to get their shot. He says now that there's more supply, there are, all, there are now more opportunities to get the vaccine. Bear County has fully vaccinated half a million people so far with more than 779,000 that have received their first dose. Yalmo Dona is also offering walk-in appointments between two in the afternoon to 5 p.m. starting today through Saturday for anyone 16 and older for the Pfizer vaccine. University Health has more appointments available on their website at wecandoitsa.com. They are also offering a limited number of walk-in appointments at those three locations listed on your screen. Again, you can walk into that, that clinic from two to 5 p.m. starting today through Saturday. Now, Mayor Ron Nirenberg says that San Antonio continues to exceed both the state and national average when it comes to people getting vaccinated. And then you can find all of this information about all of those clinics happening today on KSAT.com. Live from downtown, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. David and Stephanie. All right, Sarah, thank you very much. Meanwhile, the White House is starting a $150 million push to help more Americans get COVID-19 vaccines. The focus is on helping vulnerable populations access the shot and convincing you know, people who are skeptical about it that it's a shot worth taking. CNN's Emily Schmidt has more from Washington. In mid-December 2020, critical care nurse Sandra Lindsay received the first COVID-19 vaccine shot in the U.S., setting an example she hoped others would follow. 
I trust science. What I don't trust is getting COVID-19. Four months later, the CDC says over 130 million people 18 and over have had at least one shot. That's just over 50% of the adult population. Getting a vaccine will help protect you. It will help protect others, and it will help us end this pandemic. As of Monday, anyone 16 or older in the U.S. is eligible to be vaccinated. The Biden administration estimates nine out of 10 Americans live less than five miles from a vaccine site. Yet so far, black and Hispanic Americans have gotten vaccinated at lower rates than their share of the population. Dr. Anthony Fauci says leaders who question the vaccine are playing politics with public health. On the one hand, they want to be relieved of the restrictions, but on the other hand, they don't want to get vaccinated. At the same time, the Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine remains on pause by the CDC and FDA after six cases of rare blood clots among women who received the vaccine. That's fewer than one in a million. The U.S. Surgeon General says a decision about how to move forward is just days away. Uh, a signal was uh, was seen. It's being investigated. That's what you want to know your vaccines are both safe and effective. Johns Hopkins University says more than 3 million people are getting a vaccine dose each day. Public health officials hope they're just getting started. I'm Emily Schmidt reporting. It is now 436 and 53 degrees. And still ahead, Nation awaiting the decision by a jury in a Derek Chauvin case and getting ready for what happens after a verdict is reached. And Santos Spurs got a big win over the Pacers last night despite some pushing and shoving. Ooh. A little fun last night. Got some technical fouls thrown in there. Details and highlights coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam. Not too bad out there. You probably would need a light jacket or a sweater or something. But tomorrow, you're going to need a heavier jacket. That's what Justin's saying. We'll be right back. And welcome back. It is 439. The fate of Derek Chauvin now in the hands of the jury in Minnesota. This after the panel heard nearly five hours of closing arguments from prosecutors and the former police officer's defense attorney. They offered radically different views on what killed George Floyd during a May 2020 arrest. Prosecutors told the panel the state had proven beyond a reasonable doubt that Chauvin is guilty of second degree unintentional murder, third degree murder and manslaughter. But defense attorney Eric Nelson told the jurors that the state fell short of its meeting its burden and therefore they should find Chauvin not guilty on all of the charges. In Minneapolis, at the White House, and in cities across the country, officials have begun taking steps to prepare for the outcome in the trial. New video shows Border Patrol agents rescuing two kids who are trying to cross the Rio Grande into Texas. The video shows the moments when agents found them clinging to an island bank. The agent can be seen helping the two Honduran children ages 7 and 13 to safely board the boat. The children, who are not related, told authorities they were separated from their parents in Mexico. They said a man claimed he would help them cross into the U.S., but the children were abandoned on the riverbank. A CBP official says the children are, quote, healthy and doing well. They are being held at the temporary tent facility in Eagle Pass while awaiting transfer to Health and Human Services custody. Former Vice President Walter Mondale has died. He was 93. Mondale's family says he died yesterday in Minneapolis. He served Minnesota as Attorney General and U.S. Senator. He followed the trail bla blazed by his political mentor, Hubert Humphrey, to the vice presidency, serving under Jimmy Carter from 1977 to 1981. Mondale's own try for the White House in 1984 came at the peak of Ronald Reagan's popularity. On Election Day, he carried only his home state and the District of Columbia. Here's some happy news for Spurs fans this morning. The Spurs back at full strength last night, looking to build off of Saturday's win of the Suns with another road game in Indiana. San Antonio once again got off to a fast start, didn't slow down. Derek White, Yaka Pertle took advantage of their early mismatches by delivering a knockout punch and leading the Spurs to a 109-94 win over the shorthanded Pacers. White scored 16 of his 25 points in the first quarter, while Pertle finished with 16 points, seven rebounds in the Spurs' second straight win. The Pacers missing so many key players. White and Pertle made sure Indiana Indiana never really had a chance last night. White's three-pointer capped a 15-4 run to close the first quarter, which gave the Spurs a 36-21 lead. They never surrendered, but the game was marred by a fourth-quarter shoving match that resulted in technical fouls on two instigators, Indiana's Yakar Sampson and Patty Mills, as well as Spurs forward Rudy Gay. Sampson was ejected following the brief incident. DeMar DeRozan finished with 18. 
and he needs five more points to pass Earl Monroe for number 87 on the NBA's career scoring list. Drew Eubanks matched his career high with 13 rebounds. DeJounte Murray had 11 points, seven rebounds, and seven assists. Up next for the Spurs, no time to rest and enjoy the win. they got to get ready tomorrow night to take on the Miami Heat back here in San Antonio where they struggle at home. They went on the road, one in Phoenix, Aww. one in Indiana, and now they got to come back home. So hopefully they can get yeah. the trend going in the other direction. Maybe get a little road momentum to bring home and yeah. win one. What we hope think? so. Yeah, I think so. It was a much-needed win. So Very much they should so. should be pumped up about it. Go Spurs, go. 443, 53 degrees. And still ahead, an urgent warning for anyone with a Peloton treadmill at home how the equipment can pose a serious danger to small children and pets. And how some extravagant tourist spots around the world are trying to ramp up business again by offering vaccinations for visitors. And welcome back. It's 446. Many vacation hotspots are now offering COVID-19 vaccines to visitors in order to boost tourism. ABC's Gio Benitez has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, taking vaccine tourism to a whole new level. In the Maldives, the tourist mecca known for its crystal clear turquoise waters now wants to be known for three V's. Visit, vaccinate, vacation, offering vaccines to visitors. 1.7 million people visited the Maldives in 2019. That fell to under half a million last year. Now they are hoping people will stay for several weeks to get two doses of the vaccine while staying at one of the 500 resorts and guest houses open right now. The offer won't kick in until all of its residents are vaccinated. More than half of the country has received the vaccine. But it's not just international destinations coming up at 7 a.m. We'll tell you the places right here in America that are also considering using vaccines as the ultimate welcome gift for tourists. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. Peloton refuting warnings that its popular Tread Plus poses a scary risk to children. As 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz reports, safety regulators want the treadmill recalled, releasing a video of a child being sucked underneath it. The child got out okay, but it is disturbing to watch. Okay, Peloton, let's go. Peloton's high-end Tread Plus is the focus of an urgent warning. The Consumer Product Safety Commission cautions, if you have small children or pets at home, stop using it, citing multiple reports of children becoming entrapped, pinned and pulled under, and releasing this alarming video. It shows two children playing unsupervised near the treadmill when the boy and his ball are pulled underneath the rear of the 400-pound machine. After several seconds, he is able to get out. The CPSC, aware of one child's death linked to the treadmill, wants Peloton to stop sales and issue a recall. But Peloton is pushing back in a statement calling the notice inaccurate and misleading and saying there is no reason to stop using it if warnings and safety instructions are followed. To be safe, consumer advocates say never let children around any treadmill regardless of brand, even when you're using it. And be sure to use this, the safety key. If this is not inserted in the machine, it just won't start. And if you don't want your kids to get hurt around a treadmill, take the safety key out and put it somewhere where they can't find it. As for Peloton, it's reiterating the machine is not for children under 16 and users should keep children, pets and objects away from it. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. It is 448 and still a little chilly. Yeah. Oh, wait, 449. But we understand it's going to be even colder tomorrow, Justin. It is, Steph. In fact, uh, I think we'll have a wind chill tomorrow morning. Kind of hard to imagine that uh, we're getting into late April here. We're talking about wind chills, but that's the possibility tomorrow. Look at the uh, temperature map right now. You see Amarillo sort of jumps off the page there. 31. That's behind that cold front, which will be here this evening and dropping our temperatures. In the meantime, mid 50s here in town right now. So it's a light jacket kind of morning and we'll see those temperatures warm up pretty uh, rapidly this afternoon. Uh, wind gusts. Starting to see gusts up to 31, 32 up there around Amarillo. That's what we have to look forward to as well with this front. Some gusty winds, especially tonight. So here is the change. We're thinking 84 this afternoon, mostly sunny skies, t-shirt weather. But that front comes through. It turns windy tomorrow morning, 45. It'll feel a little bit cooler than that. 
So that's that, uh, that big change. Now, it's not going to last a long time. By uh, Thursday, we're already seeing temperatures sort of rebounding some. Forecast temperatures today again 84 here in town. We'll see some even warmer numbers down to the south and west. That front comes through 45 tomorrow morning. Some low 40s, even 30s in the hill country by tomorrow morning. And then by uh, tomorrow afternoon, low 70s, uh, about 10 degrees cooler. So maybe a little bit more uh, behind that front. Wind gust forecast, we'll see some gusts up to 30, maybe 35 miles per hour with this front out of the north. That's going to be the other side. Uh, to this. So just a heads up there. Right now we've got uh, mostly clear skies, 55 degrees at the airport west southwesterly winds at 3 and temperatures uh, already in the 40s. Lotus, Rio Medina, Hondo, 48 degrees there, 47 in Bandera. Everybody else seeing 50s at this hour. Well, I should say well, there's a little, quite a few 40s on the map. 45 Kennedy, uh, 54 down there in Katua. Rest of today, temperatures climb into the 80s, uh, 84, the expected high southwesterly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour, as we pointed out. That front should be here right about 6, 7 o'clock. So again, right after dinner time is when it is forecast to arrive. With it, maybe a couple clouds, but that's uh, not going to be a problem. No rain with this front. As we go into Wednesday, just a few clouds. We mentioned temperatures in the 70s. And then Thursday, clouds start to shift back in. We start to see the moisture coming back. That could lead to a few showers on Thursday. And then Friday is the day we're going to have to watch closely. Storm system pulls in. This may generate some showers and storms. There is a, a potential for some stronger storms as well. Hail, some gusty winds could be at play Friday afternoon. Still a little early to determine where and when that may happen, but it's something we need to watch Friday. And there is uh, a chance for some rain. That's what we want. We just don't want the severe weather. 71 tomorrow, 65 on Thursday, 20% chance of rain, likely a cloudy day on Thursday, and that'll keep temperatures down a little bit. 80 on Friday, mostly cloudy with a 40% chance of storms, and then it does warm up and clear out by the weekend. We're talking mid 80s, mostly sunny Saturday and Sunday, so the weekend looks good. So just a couple of things to worry about there, that front tonight and the storms on Friday, guys. I'll have like to watch out for it. Yep. Thank you. Got it. Thanks, Justin. <laughs> Time now is 452 and about 53 degrees. Still ahead, how Taylor Swift is once again making major chart history with her first album, with her current, is it not her first album, with her, it's called Fearless. It's yeah, an album. that it's album. album right? Yeah, that's, that's her latest. And taking a look at your winning lotto numbers, pick three, we have 715, Fireball 0, Daily 4, 2251, Fireball 1. Which one did you just do? Daily four. Oh. <laughs> catch five. Oh, catch you're, five yeah, you're, you're it. You're it. Three, six, ten, <laughs> 21, 28. And Texas two step is 13, 14, 17, 30. And the power ball is, the bonus ball is 25. Welcome back, 455. Taylor Swift making history again. And downtown Abbey fans have Downton. Abbey. How many times do you say downtown? I, that's Abbey what I used Abbey. to think it was when it first came out, and I was like, oh, that's cool, Downtown Abbey. Well, all, <laughs> all those fans are celebrating Downton. Abbey. Yes, yes, the real fans know it. But for the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Taylor Swift once again making chart history. Her album, Fearless, a re-recording of her 2008 album of the same name, debuts at number one on the Billboard 200 album chart. That makes Swift the first woman to score three chart-topping albums in less than a year. And she's the first person to score a number one album by re-recording an album that was previously number one. The majestic beauty of whales on full display in the Nat Geo series, Secrets of the Whales. Narrated by Sigourney Weaver, the series captures whales in a way we've never seen before. And Weaver tells me she found it so fascinating that at times she forgot she was working. You know, when I was narrating, some of the scenes uh, would be so jaw-dropping that I would forget to narrate because I'd be <laughs> just, you know, dazzled by what was going on. Secrets of the Whales is out Thursday, Earth Day, on Disney+. Plus. The King and Queen are coming to stay. Another Downton Abbey movie is coming, and it'll be a Christmas with the Crawleys extravaganza. We're told the original cast will return for a sequel, which will be out this December. Downton Abbey ran for six seasons on PBS, and a spin-off movie in 2019 earned almost $200 million worldwide. And give your shirt a French tuck today in honor of Tan France's birthday. The queer eye fashion guru is 38. 
while Star Trek actor and human rights activist George Takei is 84. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathans in ABC News, Los Angeles. Wow, 84. Happy birthday. Yeah. 457 and 53 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, the fate of Derek Chauvin, now in the hands of a Minnesota jury. We're going to have a more in-depth re- preview of what happens next in the case coming up. Plus, are you ready to get back in shape? Fitbit has a stylish new way to track your progress, but it's going to cost you. Details coming up in Tech Bites. Didn't know I was out of shape, but I guess I am. So I got to get back in shape. <laughs> That's saying. Oh. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. The jury is sequestered and entering their second day of deliberations. I'm Mike Ajachi reporting from Minneapolis. Coming up, we'll take a look at closing arguments. Outside with live cam, a little chilly again this morning, kind of like yesterday, so make sure your kids have a jacket when they get ready to head out and catch that bus to school. Hi, good morning. It's Tuesday, April 20th. Thanks for joining us this morning. I, I have a jacket. You brought yours today? Look at it yeah, <laughs> tomorrow we'll need a heavier one, right, yeah. Justin? Well, temperatures will only be about five degrees cooler than where they are right now, but the wind will be picking up. It's going to feel a little bit colder, and yes, we're going to get a pretty chilly morning, 40s even here in San Antonio tomorrow morning. Why? Because we have a cold front headed our way. We can see it here on the temperature map. It's 30 right now in Amarillo, 36 in Lubbock. That is that cold air plunging south. Sort of an unusual air mass for a late April. It's bringing snow to parts of Kansas and the Midwest. But uh, it's just, just cold. 18 Denver, 17 Casper, 26 up there in Bismarck. And some of this cool air will briefly work into South Texas. It's been a weird couple of years here weather-wise. We're just going to keep that going. Uh, temperatures right now, 51 here in San Antonio, 46 Hondo, 43 Kerrville, 48 right now in Rock Springs. Most everyone is looking at clear skies in Pollen count yesterday, we had a bit of good news. Molds in oak fell some. We'll see where they end up today. Pecan has been in the low category in the forecast. Takes us up to 66 by 10 o'clock. We'll be in the low to mid 80s today, so it will be warm this afternoon. But again, those changes arrive around dinner time. Gusty winds, cooler temperatures, and a chilly start to your Wednesday. Plus, we've got some storms headed our way on Friday, too. We're going to have much more on all of that here in just a few minutes. But let's get over to Samuel King with a look at your traffic this morning. Good morning. Good morning, Justin. Good morning, everyone out there. We'll start the day, unfortunately, with a crash on the north side. This is Loop 1604 and Stone Oak Parkway. Let's take a look at that uh, on the map. This is a uh, 281 behind me there. This is on the access road heading eastbound on Loop 1604. This was a major incident. We do have a crew on the way to check this out, but again, not on 1604. The main lanes, this is on the uh, frontage road right there at Stone Oak Parkway. So that's why you kind of see a lot of green on the map early this morning. A lot of green all around this morning here on our travel time. So take, take a look there. 26 minutes coming in on 35 from New Braunfels area. 28 minutes coming in from Belverde on 281 and 25 minutes coming in on I-10 from Bernie. Here is your look at Transguide 1604 at Bandera Road. Few cars on the road, traffic moving well as well at Loop 410 in Callahan. And we'll have another update coming up in a few minutes. David, Stephanie. Thank you, Samuel. All eyes are on Minneapolis today as the city and the nation awaits a verdict in the murder trial of Derek Chauvin. The prosecution and defense resting their case, then providing closing arguments. Now the jurors are sequestered and deliberation will resume in just a few hours. ABC's Ike Ajachi has the latest from Minneapolis. Expecting that we're going to be the prosecution made their closing argument clear. It's exactly what you saw with your eyes. It's what you now know in your heart. This wasn't policing. This was murder. Prosecutor Steve Schleicher telling the jurors George Floyd was not a threat, pushing back on the defense's notion that he was experiencing a surge of strength during the struggle. Just a human, just a man lying on the pavement, being pressed upon, desperately crying out. For an hour and 45 minutes, the prosecution pushed the point that the police force itself is not on trial, just one rogue officer. That officer taking off his mask while the defense began their arguments. Defense attorney Eric Nelson taking nearly three hours for his closing arguments. A reasonable police officer would, in fact, take into consideration the previous 16 minutes and 59 seconds. Their experience with the subject, the struggle that they had. 
Nelson doubling down, arguing the bystanders seemed like a threat. And Floyd's drug and heart disease was the real cause of his death. The failure of the state's experts to acknowledge any possibility, any possibility at all, that any of these other factors in any way contributed to Mr. Floyd's death defies medical science and it defies common sense. And Deliberations lasted well into the night for the diverse jury, whose members range in age from 20 to 60. Five men, seven women, four are black, six are white, and two identifying as multiracial. While the nation awaits a verdict, cities all across the country prepare for possible unrest. And here in Minneapolis, 2,000 National Guard members are on standby, and the governor has asked help from Ohio and Nebraska. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Minneapolis. Back here at home today, closing arguments are set to begin in a trial concerning the mass shooting at First Baptist Church in Sutherland Springs. That trial was brought on by a lawsuit filed by the families of the victims against the U.S. government. The families say failure by the U.S. Air Force to properly flag a shooter Devin Kelly in a national background check database allowed him to purchase the weapon he used in that shooting. U.S. District Judge Xavier Rodriguez will decide whether the U.S. government was liable in the shooting. If so, the trial will then move toward a damages phase. Texas A&M University lab has discovered a new COVID-19 variant that potentially may be resistant to antibodies. Sarah Costa is live downtown to explain that finding. Sarah, we understand only one case of this variant has been found. Good morning, Stephanie. Yeah, that's right. It's only been found in one person and researchers saying that that one case, that person had mild symptoms, so it's no reason to start a panic. But at Texas A&M researchers felt it was still necessary to share this information with the public. The genome makeup of this variant suggests it could be potentially resistant to antibodies that could make it more difficult to fight this variant of the COVID-19 virus. Researchers with the university say they do not know the full significance of this variant, but it has a combination of mutations similar to other internationally notifiable variants of concern. The variant is called BV1, which stands for Brazos Valley, where it was found and is closely related to the UK variant. It was a Texas A&M student who tested positive with this variant who had mild cold like symptoms in early mid to March that never progressed in severity and were fully resolved by April 2nd, according to the research team. While many U.S. labs limit sequencing to severe COVID-19 cases, Texas A&M is casting a wider net, including asymptomatic students, to find concerning variants like this one before they cause severe illnesses. Now, Texas A&M researchers say they will keep a close eye on this BV1 variant. And also, you can find this full story right now on KSAT.com. Reporting live from downtown, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. David and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. As early voting continues, we're checking out how the first day at the ballot box went around Bear County. More than 7,000 ballots were cast yesterday. That's higher than the first day of early voting in 2019. Of course, the race for San Antonio mayor, city council, and several propositions are on the 2021 ballot. Early voting will continue through April 27th. Election day is May 1st. We have a full list of polling locations and times on our website at kset.com. And the San Antonio water system is issuing stage two of water restrictions effective today. Those restrictions include only watering your grass with a sprinkler like device once a week on your assigned day based on your address. They also include washing your car only on Saturday or Sunday. You are not allowed to wash off parking lots, streets, driveways or sidewalks and your pool must be at least 25% shaded. Officials say it is not a call to panic, but the restrictions should be taken seriously. But we don't want you to be worried that water is ever going to stop coming out of that faucet. That's just not happening in San Antonio. And when we moved out here, we noticed, hey, it's a desert out here. <laughs> so conserving water is huge out here, especially in the San Antonio heat and uh, very necessary. <laughs> You could hand water your grass at any time on any day. However, if you are caught violating the rules, you can face a citation. Someone can report you violating these restrictions. And if you want to do this, you can visit the story on our website at KSAT.com. It is now 509 and 52 degrees. And still had Facebook announcing some brand new audio features to fight off some of its competition. And the towers are going up. The phones are coming out and the news is buzzing. Are you ready for the 5G rollout? Find out the secrets of the 5G coming up next.
and taking a look outside with live cam, a chilly start to your day in the 50s. I would follow Justin's advice. He says, light jacket this morning, shorts this afternoon, and a little heavier jacket tomorrow morning. We'll be right back. And welcome back, it's 513. Are you ready for the 5G future? And if you're still baffled by 5G, you're not alone. The newest generation of wireless standard has just started to hit the market. Back in 2019, there were 10 million 5G connections, and by 2023, you may be one of the 1.1 billion 5G connections. Eric Hernandez answers the question, what is 5G? Stop 5G! Stop 5G! Whether you want it or not, 5G is here. So what is it? 5G is what comes after 4G and before 6G. The cell signal? 5G stands for the fifth generation of cellular networks. The majority difference, speed. Recent speed tests put 5G ultra wideband downloads at 988 megabits per second. That's an 820% increase over LTE. This means faster download speeds for videos and streaming, 50 times lower latency and way less buffering. So what does 5G mean for you right now? Not that much. 5G is limited to areas with 5G towers and to devices that are capable of interpreting the signal. To use 5G, you need a 5G capable phone. Top players in the 5G game are Apple, Samsung, Google, T-Mobile, and Verizon. All phones and cell towers emit electromagnetic energy, but the FDA has limits in place for 5G radiation. The FCC reports that there is no evidence of harm. While the switch to 5G isn't a pressing task for everyone, getting a 5G capable phone now to prepare for the future is what tech experts called future proofing or ensuring your phone survives the worldwide internet upgrade at least until 6G comes around. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. In time, future yeah? proofing? Oh. Do I hear what? Future proofing? Well, yeah. Otherwise, had... go spend money, buy a phone now. That's all that here. <laughs> With a flip phone. 515, 52 degrees. And still ahead, Fitbit is unveiling a stylish new fitness tracker. We're going to tell you how much it will cost you. This shot is our shot, our opportunity. COVID-19 has taken so much from so many. But this is our shot at returning to the faces and places we love and miss. COVID-19 vaccines are ready, and so is Walgreens, with pharmacists you know, who know you. So when you're ready, they'll be ready to give it to you safely for free. This is our shot at bringing our communities back together. Providing healing, not just for some, but for all. This is our shot. This is our shot. This is our shot at reconnecting with the ones we love, with the world we've lost. This is our shot. today's Tech Fights, Facebook's new push into audio rooms. Mark Zuckerberg says a new feature called Live Audio Rooms will allow users to have real-time conversations with others similar to the Clubhouse app. It's starting to be tested now and is expected to be available this summer. The right-wing social media app Parler is making a comeback next week. Apple said it reached an agreement to reinstate Parler, which was booted after the Capitol riot. It now says new safeguards have been implemented to detect prohibited posts. And check out Fitbit's latest Creation, the stylish Fitbit Lux has a built-in color display that looks like jewelry instead of a fitness band. It comes in three colors, gold, platinum, and matte graphite. It's Fitbit's first offering as an official part of Google's Alphabet. Now, you don't have to worry about it matching your outfit. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. They are nice. Good to know. Yeah. I was worried about it. Uh, <laughs> Having a fashionable thing. Fitbit? Yeah. yeah. So. That's a big concern. Are you <laughs> worried about traffic? Uh, not right now. I don't think so. Am I correct, Samuel? Well, we do have uh, one uh, major issue not really impacting the roads, but it is a crash, uh, Stephanie and David. This is on the uh, north side on Loop 1604, really the only uh, real issue across uh, the area. This is, as I mentioned, Loop 1604 Stone Oak Parkway west of 281. The investigation and everything is on the 
service or frontage roads. And our Katrina Weber hopefully will have more on that coming up. Uh, but she does tell us that this car was traveling, appeared it was traveling on 1604 and went off the highway, that elevated highway there, and down into below here at Stone Oak Parkway. So that's kind of why you're seeing the green here as we take a look at the travel time, not really impacting the times too much this time of morning, 11 minutes between Bandera and 281 in both directions there. So uh, that is uh, the fortunate thing there is a crash, but uh, not impacting traffic at this hour. Now, if this were happening maybe in another hour and a half or so, we'd really see some major traffic impact. Looking at Transkai 410 at Bandera, looking uh, fine this morning. A few cars out there as people get their day started a little bit early there, guys. Sounds good. Not too bad, except for that one crash. And then, Justin, today's going to be pretty nice after all. Yeah, it starts off a little cool, guys. We got temperatures in the 50s right now, and then warms up pretty nicely this afternoon. We'll rewind a little <laughs> bit first, though. Uh, David mentioned yesterday that because of the wind, you would need a sturdy kite, so he uh -huh. inspired me. Actually, I made it just for him. I made this graphic just for him. Here's your kite. Oh! <laughs> these, look, these look pretty sturdy. Those, Those are guys. nice. Uh, windy. Tomorrow morning. That's your time frame, David. Love this so you gotta face. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta go out tomorrow morning to fly your kite. Okay. Good sturdy one. 35 mile per hour wind gust tomorrow morning. So heads up there. Uh, and, and really, we're gonna see some changes in the temperatures, guys. So 84 this afternoon. It's gonna be pretty toasty, short sleeves, but that front comes through tonight. And that's when we get the windy weather. And those winds will be gusty through tomorrow morning. 45 to start your Wednesday, but it's gonna feel cooler than that because of those gusty north winds. So be prepared for that change. Uh, here's a look at the forecast. This is around 5 o'clock today. We're in the mid 80s. Front comes through mid 40s by 7 o'clock Wednesday, as we talked about. And then 70 is for most everybody tomorrow with a few 60s in the hill country. So a, a nice cool down even in late April. The wind gust forecast, I think we could go gust size 30, 35 miles per hour. That's enough to you know, blow some trash cans around, that sort of thing. So. Uh, just know that that window of gusty winds will be there. Outside right now, temperatures at 51 degrees at the airport. We're seeing some 40s here in town, 49 Kelly. So it's chilly this morning, too. Uh, you'll still want to coat uh, today. 46 Hondo, 43 Tarpley, 44 Curvo. And then zooming out some 46 Carrizo Springs, 53 in Del Rio. Rest of today, those temperatures will rapidly rise. Uh, by noontime, we're going to be in the 70s. And then, as we mentioned, 80s a little bit later this afternoon. Uh, we also talked about a little earlier that uh, we're now in stage two restrictions. Uh, keep in mind watering is 7 to 11 in the morning, 7 to 11 at night on your day. And that's based on your address. What it ends in uh, will be your day. We, we need some rain uh, if we're going to get out of these drought situations. We're hoping that maybe Friday may be our day to at least get some showers and storms uh, to help us out a little bit. First, there is our front. Uh, then we see that uh, we'll get partly cloudy skies on Wednesday. Thursday, moisture does return rather quickly. We get some showers, some clouds on Thursday. Thursday is going to be probably an overcast day. And then here comes our next storm system. And this is what we think will bring us some showers and storms. There's still some question on timing, how much rain. As we get a little bit closer, we'll be able to answer some of those questions. But one thing we do know is that there could be some stronger storms associated with this. And so we need to keep a close eye on it. Uh, here's how the seven day looks. Uh, 71 tomorrow, 65 Thursday, 80 on Friday, 40% chance of storms. And then a nice weekend. If you have plans this weekend, it'll be a little warm, but nice nonetheless. Uh, so Friday is our day if we're going to get some rain, guys, it looks like. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. That was nice. You made a kite for David. Anytime. Yeah. <laughs> and he will tell me to go fly a kite. No. Oh. No, no, no. Oh, yeah, you would. I'll fly a sturdy kite. A sturdy kite. A sturdy kite. kite. <laughs> Windy in the morning. Yeah. Time now is 524 and about 52 degrees right now. Well, that's pretty good. I'll give you that. Coming up next in your morning spotlight, a preview of Marvel's Shang Chi. What? Shang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. It's a teaser. Plus, another classic kids game gets a, made into a movie. Welcome back, 527. Plenty of movie news today from a new superhero to an Oscar nominee to the latest game bound for the big screen. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. It's time for you to take your place by my side. That's not going to happen. Here's your first look at Marvel's first Asian superhero in the teaser trailer for Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. 
It was something of a gift for star Simu Liu. Marvel released the trailer on his birthday. Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings hits theaters September 3rd. My twins will be 18 next month. They have absolutely no idea what it means to have a father in their house, what fathers even do. One of this year's most buzzed about Oscar nominees for Best Documentary is Time, about Fox Rich and her two-decade fight for clemency for her imprisoned husband, Rob, while raising their six children. Time, winner of two dozen critics and film fest awards, is now playing on Amazon Prime. You know what? It was crazy. Vin Diesel is working with Mattel on a movie based on one of the toy makers' products. No, not Hot Wheels, that's already in development. Instead, Diesel will produce and star in Rock'em Sock'em Robots, based on the boxing game featuring Red Rocket and Blue Bomber. Looks like we might get to see Diesel actually knock someone's block off. Protecting my jaw in Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. <laughs> that's funny, protecting my jaw in Hollywood. You know, it comes up with funny stuff. You ever had the Rock'em Sock'em Robot? No, is it fun? There's a, there is some around here somewhere in the station. What? We had them years ago, yeah. Oh. Somewhere around here. I hadn't seen them. Yeah. Cool. 528, 52 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA as jurors in the Derek Chauvin trial deliberate, cities around the country are preparing for possible unrest following the verdict. Plus, want to get paid to drink more coffee? We'll tell you why one company is offering this unique perk and how you can sign up. Hi, good morning. It is Tuesday, April 20th. Thanks for joining us today. We were talking about some changes in the West. A little chilly this morning, but you can also expect it to be a little windy coming up too as well, Justin. Ah, uh, yes. Cold front, reason behind all of that. It's going to cool us down. Uh, also going to bring those gusty winds. Probably some gusts up to 30, 35 miles per hour. That's that range where uh, you can hear it sort of uh, being uh, fairly blustery outside. Some trash cans will be rolling down the street. So that'll be tomorrow morning. In the meantime, uh, we're starting off fairly cool this morning. 51 degrees here in town. That cold front's still up in the Texas Panhandle, but it is really cooling things down. 30 in Amarillo, 36 in Lubbock. There are freeze watches and warnings for a large portion of North Texas, all the way down to San Angelo and Abilene. They could see temperatures close to freezing. We may see some temperatures in the 30s here in the Hill Country. Not freezing, though. I, I'm not expecting any freezing numbers for us, but it, again, will be chilly. And there's even some snow up across parts of Kansas right there on the top of your screen. So this is sort of a late season push of cold air. Locally, 51 at the airport, 44 at Kerrville, 48 in Rock Springs, 43 in Fredericksburg. And the forecast for today, 66 by 10 o'clock, 74 noontime. We'll be in the mid 80s today, so actually we'll be fairly warm before that front slides through. The other big story in the forecast, a chance for some thunderstorms by Friday. We'll talk more about that here in just a few minutes, but we'll toss it over to Samuel King. You still have an incident up there on Stone Oak? Yeah, north side at 1604 in Stone Oak, and we'll get to that in just a moment, Justin. This is 35 at Topper Wine. Uh, things flowing well in both directions there on the northeast side. Some other travel times right now, 28 minutes coming in from Pleasanton, 19 minutes on US 90 into downtown from Castroville, and 16 minutes from the Lytle area on I-35. This is what Justin was talking about as we look at the maps. You see that icon there on the north side, 1604 and Stone Oak. We had a single vehicle crash earlier uh, this morning and the main sort of investigation and the like is going on on the frontage roads there, not on 1604 itself. And with more on what happened uh, this morning, our Katrina Weber is live on the scene. And Katrina, we, we understand that uh, this woman uh, may be, this might have been a bit of drowsy driving going on. That's what police tell me, that she's, she told them she fell asleep at the wheel. Uh, let me just tell you, as far as the traffic situation goes, police are making quick work of this crash. We already have the tow truck here. The only thing uh, still closed right now uh, is that turnaround there as you head to the westbound lanes of 1604. But wow, this is one of those things that you really had to see to believe. The car now on the tow truck came off the elevated lanes, the westbound lanes, landed in the middle of the street. This is Stone Oak Parkway and then sort of bounced up to the top of the embankment there and slid back down. 
I mentioned you have to see this. We have some video to show you uh, as that car was there, crumbled in the front. The woman, though, inside uh, was alert and talking, according to police. They loaded her into the ambulance. Uh, they said they didn't know the extent of her injuries, but she was alert and talking despite what happened. She basically flew off the elevated highway, hit the ground, and then hit the embankment rolled back down again. Uh, they said that this appears to be the only car that was involved. Again, they say that she told them that she's been working uh, multiple jobs and she did fall asleep at the wheel. So it doesn't look like they're looking for any of the drivers who were involved. Just that one woman who apparently was alert and awake as she went to the hospital. Reporting live in Stone Oak, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Today, the jury in the Derek Chauvin murder trial will continue deliberating. And as CNN's Brett Conway reports, while the nation waits for a verdict, cities all over the country are getting ready for what could happen after that verdict is read. I'm not a bad guy, man. Get in the car. I'm not a bad guy. Nearly a year after George Floyd was killed and former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin was arrested and charged with his murder, the country has been watching this courtroom in Minneapolis. But what happens next is up to just nine women and five men. Members of the jury, the case is in your hands as judges of the facts. I am certain that you realize that this case is important and serious. Floyd's killing sparked protests around the country. And now on the verge of a verdict, protests continue. With the recent police killing of Dante Wright just miles away in Brooklyn Center, only adding to the frustration and anger. Officials in cities all over Minnesota are prepping for potential unrest. Businesses are boarding up in California. And preps are happening in Philadelphia and in D.C. We uh, have a request into the, the Guard. The Army will deploy the D.C. National Guard to help up to 250 if there's significant unrest. Officials from Atlanta and New York say they're getting ready to. If folks have feelings they want to express, do it peacefully. The White House says it's been preparing for all scenarios and has been for weeks. We're in touch with local authorities. We're in touch with states, with governors, with mayors. And now we wait. I'm Britt Conway reporting. People around the globe have put trillions of dollars in savings since the start of the pandemic. That's according to Moody's Analytics. It reports that worldwide consumers have saved an extra $5.4 trillion. The U.S. makes up a large chunk of that, with Americans putting aside $2.6 trillion. Many wealthier households were able to build up their savings because their incomes have not been affected by the pandemic. Add to that, they were not able to spend money on travel, dining out, and entertainment. Experts believe this sets the stage for a spending boom and economic growth this year. The CEO of GameStop stepping down. The video game retailer says George Sherman will resign as CEO on July 31st and perhaps earlier if a replacement is found. Sherman has been in the position since April of 2019. The pandemic hit before he could fully execute his plan to turn the company around. GameStop was then forced to temporarily close stores. Sherman said he was proud of what the company accomplished over the past two years. The company became the quintessential meme stock in January as Social media fans battled hedge funds who were betting the stock would go down. Game stock, excuse me, GameStop stocks rallied on news of Sherman's departure. It is now 538, 52 degrees. And still ahead, if you really need a new job, why moving to West Virginia may be a possibility for you. We're going to tell you how much money they're offering. And coming up next, details on why a Texas detention center housing hundreds of unaccompanied migrant girls was just shut down by the Biden administration. And taking a look outside with live cam, we are in the cool 50s right now, but it's going to be a little cooler tomorrow morning and windy. We're going to check with Justin later on. Welcome back. It is 541. The Biden administration has abruptly closed a detention center in Texas, housing hundreds of unaccompanied migrant girls. ABC's Cecilia Vega has the details on some disturbing allegations. 
This massive warehouse in Houston is closed. The nearly 500 unaccompanied migrant girls housed there abruptly moved. ABC News obtaining this exclusive video, staffers removing their belongings, girls being driven off in buses, and this exchange with police at the scene. For their own safety. Facing an influx at the border, the Biden administration rushed to open the center, awarding a $4 million contract to the National Association of Christian Churches, a group that specializes in disaster relief, not caring for migrant kids. But just 17 days later, that contract ended after what sources say were multiple allegations, including not enough staffers to accompany children to the bathroom, some girls told to use plastic bags to relieve themselves, children sitting on cots most of the day, non-existent outdoor space. Migrant rights advocate Cesar Espinosa toured the site two weeks ago. The girls were not allowed to get up unless it was to shower or to use the restroom. Even their meals were delivered to their cots. Tonight, this new video showing the warehouse full of cots and the belongings left behind. A lawyer for the church group tells ABC News the administration, including Health and Human Services Secretary Javier Becerra, personally requested their services and that they did what they could do to help under the direction of HHS. But tonight, the Biden administration not answering questions about how a group with little to no experience working with migrant children was awarded a multi-million dollar contract to do exactly that. For ABC News, I'm Cecilia Vega here at the White House. And time now is 5.43, and we're at about 52 degrees right now. Still ahead, if you need a job, we'll tell you why moving to West Virginia may be a good idea when it comes to starting a new career. And welcome back. It is 5.46. In your morning consumer headlines, a new survey by Nestle says Americans are actually taking fewer coffee breaks and working longer hours since the beginning of the pandemic. To reverse that trend, a brand called Chameleon Organic Coffee would like to pay two lucky people to take more coffee breaks. Each person will win a cash prize of $3,000 and a generous stash of Chameleon cold brew coffee. To enter, the company urges people just to take more coffee breaks and click on chameleoncoffee.com. All you have to do is put your email in the entry form before May 31st and sit back and take your break. The winners will be selected by a random drawing the first week in June. And pack your bags, West Virginia will pay you to move there. Governor Jim Justice just announced a program called Ascend West Virginia. The program will pay remote workers $12,000 over two years if they move to the state. The state promises $10,000 divided into monthly payments for the first year, followed by $2,000 paid at the end of the second year. The package also includes a year's worth of free outdoor recreation like whitewater rafting and downhill skiing. To apply, you must be at least 18 years old with a full-time remote job at a company that is not located in West Virginia. Hey, many may be ready to hit the road for spring or summer vacations pretty soon, but travel experts say many cars that have been idling during the pandemic need to be serviced for safety. CNN's Mandy Gaither has more details on what you need to get checked. As the weather heats up, so does business at some local car repair shops. What a difference a year makes. Last year, at United Tire and Service in Pennsylvania, it was quiet, but now business is booming. Company president Greg Minaw says many customers are gearing up for a road trip. Our service bays are busier, our teams are busier. Uh, it definitely feels like we're back to normal. AAA says road trips continue to be the preferred way to travel in the U.S. If your car has been sitting in your driveway for the past year, it might need a checkup. If you have a favorite mechanic, check to see if there are any changes to how the business operates in the pandemic. And appointments are encouraged, according to David Bennett, AAA's repair systems manager. Is there a contactless uh, drop-off where you can just pull up, drop the keys off, let them know? Or is there a drop box where you put the keys? So you want to know the problem. Process. Bennett says there are four main things a mechanic should inspect. Your battery, without use, it might have a lower life expectancy. Your hoses, make sure they're not dried out or cracked. Your tires, make sure they're inflated and not worn. And get your fluid levels checked. Make sure they're clean and filled. Some of those are the oil, the transmission fluid, Power steering fluid, brake fluid are the four most common that you want to take a look at. And if you're hitting the road, don't wait until the last minute to head to a mechanic. You should be two weeks or so in advance of a trip, getting everything prepared on the car, make sure it's right uh, before making a trip. For Consumer Watch, I'm Mandy Gaither. 
All right, so far we have had that single car crash at 1604 in Stone Oak. Let's go ahead and check back with Samuel King. Thank you, uh, David and Stephanie. Yes, we do still crew still on the, the scene there up there on the north side. Also have looks like a stalled vehicle on 35 that just popped up. But we'll take a closer look, uh, as you're mentioning here at the uh, Stone Oak uh, incident. Again, uh, this was Sloop 1604 Stone Oak Parkway. Our Katrina Weber telling us that a woman uh, was traveling westbound actually on 1604, first reported eastbound, uh, came off the roadway, uh, fell onto Stone Oak Parkway uh, below, apparently some sort of uh, drowsy driving uh, situation. Again, it can be very uh, dangerous to do that. And we know there's a lot of you who might be working overnight, might just be getting home, but that's just something uh, to keep in mind. Just be careful uh, if you are someone who works overnight and make sure you're alert before you hit the roads. But hopefully, uh, as Katrina was mentioning, this should be cleared from the scene soon and, and traffic there on the service roads and Stone Oak Parkway should return to normal uh, fairly shortly. Uh, taking a look at uh, 151 uh, right now. We had some uh, construction there as we did on the west side right there at Loop 410, but uh, things looking good there. Eight to nine minutes between 1604 and Highway 90. This is uh, Trans Guide 35 at Top of Wine. Again, that is looking fine, guys. Good news there. Thank you, Samuel. I am packing my heavier jacket tomorrow, at least for the morning, right? At least for the morning, yes. Uh, this morning, you probably want a light jacket too and dress in layers because by the afternoon it gets warm and then tomorrow morning even colder, windier, and then not so bad tomorrow afternoon. So a lot happening in the next 48 hours or so. Right now, we've got 51 degrees. West northwesterly winds really light at about three miles per hour. So that's a little chilly out there. We got clear skies. 40s though in the Hill Country, 44 Comfort, 42 Kerrville, 45 in Bandera. And we'll see temperatures maybe slip a couple more degrees before it's all said and done this morning. So yes, it is, uh, it's a cool start. And as we look at the forecast temperatures, we'll be up around 84 today. So that's the first change. Cool this morning, warm this afternoon. Cold front comes in around dinner time. And look at the numbers tomorrow morning. 45 here in San Antonio, but it feels cooler than that because we'll get some gusty north winds. And then even some low 40s, even 30s potentially in the hill country tomorrow morning. And then we warm back into the 70s by tomorrow afternoon. Uh, so we'll shave off about 10 degrees for afternoon highs as well with this cold front. The other side to all this, some gusty winds, gusts to 30, 35 miles per hour as the front comes through. And that's mainly going to be tonight into early tomorrow morning. Uh, here's the current setup, and you can see where that front is. It's 30 in Amarillo, 36 in Lubbock, and there will be some widespread freezing temperatures across parts of North Texas. This is sort of a late season cold push here, and there could be some record lows set in a few spots. As we go forward in time, that front again moves through, I'd say 6, 7 o'clock this evening, and you'll notice it when it moves through because those winds will pick up, and uh, it'll get uh, quite a bit cooler. Forecast for tomorrow. This is five o'clock tomorrow afternoon. We get partly cloudy skies. Won't be so bad. And then on Thursday, the clouds really build in. Moisture comes back. We could see some isolated showers on Thursday. And then Friday is the day that we've got to watch pretty closely because we could look for some thunderstorms by tomorrow, Friday afternoon, I should say, as our next storm system moves in. And there is also potential for a couple of strong storms. So that's why it uh, it's one of those days where as we get closer, we'll be able to refine the forecast a little bit more, but it's something that we do indeed need to watch. 71 tomorrow, 65 Thursday, cloudy, 20% chance of showers, 40% chance of showers and storms Friday, and then clearing out this weekend. So next three or four days, pretty busy in the seven-day forecast, guys. Very interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, it's kind of nice, though. <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Justin. Time now is 5.53 and about 53 degrees right now. All right, let's check out some lottery numbers for you. Pick three, seven, one, five, fireball zero, and your daily four is two, two, five, one, fireball is one. Cash five, three, six, 10, 21, 28, and your Texas two step, 13, 14, 17, 30, bonus ball 25. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we are bracing for a verdict and all eyes are on Minneapolis where the jury is set to start deliberating for a second day. Who are the jurors deciding the former officer's fate and when can we expect a decision in the George Floyd case? Also, how you can talk to your kids about all of this. That and so much more coming up right here on GMA.
A new episode of KSAT Explains is out tonight, and this week the show is about one of the most widely debated items on the May ballot, Prop B. If approved, Prop B would repeal the San Antonio Police Union's right to collectively bargain, but the issue is complicated, so we lay it all out for you what Prop B would and wouldn't accomplish if passed, and fact check arguments both for and against it. KSAT Explains Prop B will be live streamed at 7 p.m. tonight on KSAT.com, the KSAT TV app, and the KSAT Facebook page. If you can't catch it live, you can watch the episode on demand after that at KSAT.com slash explains. A majority of Americans have less than $1,000 in a savings account. Just ahead on GMSA, we've got simple ways you can trick your brain into saving money. And as we go to break, take a live look outside with Trans Guide. Sam King coming up with a check of your traffic. And Justin Horn's got your forecast coming up in the next hour of Good Morning San Antonio. We'll be right back. If you still haven't gotten your COVID-19 shot, today there is a drive through clinic where appointments are not required. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta. In just a bit, we'll tell you about how you can get your vaccine. Police say one man is in the hospital with a bullet wound to the hand after he was shot outside his house overnight. That shooter still on the run this morning. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we're starting off in the 50s, so kind of cool, but it's going to be nice today. So, yes, I believe it is a weather roller coaster. We're going to check in with Justin right now. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And good morning. It is Tuesday, April 20th. Happy Tuesday. Thanks for joining us. And I hope you're looking forward to a nice day because I think it's going to turn out to be one today. We can only hope. Yeah, we hope so. Yeah, well, it, it's a little cool, but no one's, I don't think anyone's complaining. Yeah. I mean, late April could be so much worse. We could be talking about 90s. We're actually talking about 40s and 50s this morning. And it gets even colder tomorrow morning. So mm. weather roller coasters, uh, a good term, maybe weather whiplash. Mm -hmm. Even a little bit better. I think Adam Kasky used that last night. Good way to explain what's going to happen next 48 hours. As we look at the state, pretty quiet. You go uh, north into Kansas, and I know it's kind of hard to see behind the banner there, but it is snowing. That's just how cold it is. This cool air is moving south. Uh, we're at 52 right now, but it is 30 in Amarillo, 34 Lubbock. That's that cold air that is shifting south with a cold front. And as we zoom out further, 15 in Casper, 19 in Denver. It's 32 in Wichita with snow. So this is a late season push of cold air, and we're going to feel a little bit of it uh, coming up tomorrow. Pollen count, molds are moderate, oak is moderate. Those numbers actually coming down a little bit yesterday, so that was some good news. We'll see where they stand today. Hopefully we'll get some even better news when that pollen count comes in. Forecast, 66 by 10 o'clock. 74 noontime will be in the 80s this afternoon, so it is going to be warm. If you grab the light coat this morning, you won't need it a little bit later today. We're going to talk about that cold front, the cooler temperatures tomorrow, and our chances for rain on Friday. It's looking pretty decent uh, coming up here in just a bit. But let's get over to Samuel now. We've had a few incidences this morning. Samuel, how's it looking now? Uh, things are improving, but we do, again, as you mentioned, Justin, have some uh, minor incidents here and there. Good morning to you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, looking at some travel times real quick, 25 minutes if you're coming in from Bernie and I-10 to downtown, 25 minutes as well from the New Braunfels area to downtown, 28 minutes on 281 from Belverde. There's a look at a stalled vehicle appears there, Loop 410 in Fredericksburg. That's something uh, to watch out for. I also have a report here of one on I-35 on the uh, northeast side. But one thing we have been following uh, this morning is Loop 1604 at Stone Oak Parkway. There was a crash overnight, a single vehicle crash there. A pretty uh, dramatic one, in fact. And our Katrina Weber is at the scene. And Katrina, how does traffic look now? I understand this might have been clear. Well, that's right. Police say that the woman told them that uh, she did fall asleep at the wheel, and that is what caused this accident as far as they're concerned. Now, uh, we did have a traffic situation here, but that's cleared up. The uh, turnaround lane was shut down for a while. It is now open, as you can see, traffic uh, traveling along the road here. But just a few signs still of what happened. There's a big yaw mark in the middle of the street where the car landed after it flew off the overpass here. And then it went up the embankment uh, it, where it hit the top of the embankment and then rolled back down. Let me give you a look at the video so you can see exactly uh, how police are saying that this is pretty miraculous that the woman wasn't more seriously hurt or even killed. 
Uh, she was taken to the hospital. Police say she was alert and talking as she was loaded into an ambulance. This crash happened about 5 o'clock this morning. Again, the woman was westbound on 1604. Told police she fell asleep at the wheel. She left the roadway, came off that elevated highway, hit the middle of Stone Oak Parkway, and then went up the embankment and rolled back down again. Uh, they said that they did not know the extent of her injuries, but again, she was alert and talking, which tells police that, uh, you know, she did survive this crash, which is, has them sort of shaking them, their heads, that uh, considering what happened, she wasn't more seriously hurt. Reporting live in Stono, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Also new this morning, San Antonio police are looking for two people they say were involved in an overnight shooting. It happened in the 2400 block of Magnolia around 11 last night. That's near Wilson Boulevard and West Woodlawn Avenue. Police say a man told two people outside his house to be quiet when one of them pulled out a gun and fired at him. Officers say a bullet hit the man's hand. He was taken to University Hospital, expected to be OK. The two suspects then ran off. One woman is behind bars after police say she faked a signature to sell a house. Now, according to an arrest affidavit, 35 year old Tiana Brown and her boyfriend bought a house with her boyfriend's winnings from the Texas lottery. It said both of them signed the title, but the boyfriend moved away and broke up with Brown. The boyfriend then went to check on the house and saw a for sale sign in the yard. The affidavit states that Brown forged a signature with Remax to sell the house by herself. She now faces charges of forgery. If you haven't had a chance to roll up your sleeve and receive the COVID-19 vaccine yet today, there is a drive through vaccine clinic that doesn't require an appointment. Sarah Coast is live downtown with how you can take advantage of this opportunity. Sarah, good morning. Good morning, David. Yeah, that opportunity is happening at the Alamo Dome with its drive through clinic where you can just walk up. You don't need an appointment. Mayor Ron Nuremberg is continuing to encourage everyone to get their shot as the vaccine rollout accelerates. He says now that there's more supply. There are now more opportunities to get the vaccine. Bear County has fully vaccinated half a million people so far with more than 779,000 people have received their first dose. The Alamo Dome is offering walk-in appointments between 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. starting today through Saturday for anyone 16 and older. This, of course, will be the Pfizer vaccine. University Health has more appointments available on their website as well at WeCanDoItSA.com. They are also offering a limited number of walk-in appointments at three locations that are listed on your screen. Mayor Ron Nirenberg says that San Antonio continues to exceed both the state and national average when it comes to getting people vaccinated. You can find all of this information about these walk through this, these walk in clinics that are happening today right now on KSAT.com. Live from downtown, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Stephanie and David. Thank you, Sarah. Local health officials are reporting 119 new cases of COVID-19 in Bear County and no new deaths. Mayor Ron Nirenberg says the seven day rolling average is now at 172 cases per day. He also says the positivity rate is 2.2%. Sarah touched on it a second ago. Mayor Ron Nirenberg urging everyone in San Antonio to get a COVID-19 vaccine. He says patience was key at the start of the vaccine rollout, but there's now more supply and more opportunities to get your shot. Bear County has fully vaccinated a half a million people so far, while more than 779,000 have received their first dose. University Health made more appointments available on their website, WeCanDoItSA.com. They are also offering a limited number of walk-in appointments at three locations listed right there on your screen. Hospitals in the area are tearing down COVID-19 units as the number of positive cases and patients go down. Hospitals and physicians say they've seen a drop in the number of infections in the last month. COVID units once at or above capacity are now housing about 20 to 30 patients at a day. Medical experts say they're keeping an eye on the infection rates in other states and also tracking how the variants respond to the vaccine. They also say they'll be ready for action again if needed. We're prepared. We know how to re-execute opening that. We just really hope that we don't have to. We know it can happen again, but I think what we feel very fortunate is uh, we here at University Health, and I think most of the major hospitals feel that we could respond again. Doctors say the drop in cases is due to increased vaccination efforts, as well as people continuing to wear masks and social distance.
The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recommending that people who experience new symptoms after receiving the Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine should seek medical treatment immediately. It comes during a pause of the vaccine to a small number of reported blood clots. Health experts are preparing to present their conclusions after studying the company's one-shot vaccine. If given the all clear, vaccines could resume later on this week. And after downplaying the seriousness of the pandemic, Mexico's president will receive his first dose of a COVID vaccine today. Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador will be injected with the Oxford AstraZeneca shot to, quote, help build public confidence in the vaccine, end quote. Mexico has conti continued using AstraZeneca despite reported risks of rare blood clots. Other news this morning with the Edwards Aquifer at a low level, the San Antonio water system issuing stage two of water restrictions effective today. That means you will only be able to use sprinklers to water your grass once a week on your assigned day. Those days are determined by the last number of your address. You will only be able to wash your car on Saturday or Sunday as well. Nobody is allowed to wash off parking lots, streets, driveways or sidewalks and your pool must be at least 25% shaded. Officials say it is not a reason to panic, but the restrictions should be taken seriously. But we don't want you to be worried that water is ever going to stop coming out of that faucet. That's just not happening in San Antonio. And when we moved out here, we noticed, hey, it's a desert out here. So <laughs> conserving water is huge out here, especially in the San Antonio heat and uh, very necessary. Officials say you could hand water your grass at any time on any day. If you are caught violating the rules, you may receive a citation. To see all the rules or report a violation, visit this story on our website, KSET.com. And time now is about 610 and about 52 degrees right now. Heated moments between last night's, in last night's Spurs game between the Spurs and the Pacers with the silver and black able to outpace Indiana. We've got the highlights coming on later this morning. The towers are going up and the phones are coming out and the news is buzzing. After the break, we're going to explore what's in store for the 5G future. And outside with live cam again today, somewhat of a normal day. Wind coming through, cold front coming through tonight and then weird stuff happening over the next couple of days. Justin Horn's got all that for you coming up in just a second. You're watching Good Morning San Antonio. Whether you want it or not, 5G is here. So what is it? 5G is what comes after 4G and before 6G. The cell signal? 5G stands for the fifth generation of cellular networks. The majority difference? Speed. Recent speed tests put 5G ultra wideband downloads at 988 megabits per second. That's an 820% increase over LTE. This means faster download speeds for videos and streaming, 50 times lower latency and way less buffering. So what does 5G mean for you right now? Not that much. 5G is limited to areas with 5G towers and to devices that are capable of interpreting the signal. To use 5G, you need a 5G capable phone. Top players in the 5G game are Apple, Samsung, Google, T-Mobile, and Verizon. All phones and cell towers emit electromagnetic energy, but the FDA has limits in place for 5G radiation. The FCC reports that there is no evidence of harm. While the switch to 5G isn't a pressing task for everyone, getting a 5G capable phone now to prepare for the future is what tech experts called future proofing or ensuring your phone survives the worldwide internet upgrade at least until 6G comes around. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. All right, let's check in on traffic. Have some green this morning, then a little bit of red. Yeah, we have green. we have one crash, but green for the most part, right, Samuel? Yeah, pretty uh, green. We do have uh, some stalled vehicles uh, here and there, but most of uh, the things are fine. Uh, Katrina Weber telling us at the top of the hour that that crash we were talking about at 1604 in Stone Oak on the north side uh, has been cleared. But let's take a closer look at some of these uh, other situations here. This one is on 35 uh, northbound at uh, Wheatner Road. 
Also, you saw one there that was on I-10 on the east side as well. Just uh, watch out for that. Then look at uh, I-37 between uh, 1604 and I-10 downtown, 11 to 13 minutes, depending on which way you're going. So that looks uh, fairly good. Uh, we did have a stall vehicle here at uh, Loop 410 at Fredericksburg Road, uh, moving the camera now because it does appear that that uh, person has uh, gotten on his way. So uh, we'll take a another look at the traffic coming up at 630, guys. Samuel, thank you. Feels good outside. Temperatures in the 40s and 50s right now. It's light jacket kind of weather. Won't be that way this afternoon. We'll get the temperatures back into the 80s a little bit later today. Even 52 right now at the airport. 46 Bernie Stage, 45 in Bandera. Clear skies for everybody. 53 in Del Rio. 46 down there in Pleasanton. There's a look outside. Uh, 50 Stinson, 47 at Kelly. 52 Randolph. Clear skies, cold winds. Slowing those temperatures to drop. But believe it or not, will be even colder tomorrow morning. Cold front will bring some chillier temperatures again. Uh, mid 80s today. In fact, we could even get close to 90 in a few spots. Here comes the front should arrive right around dinner time. Gusty winds as it does and then cools us down to 45. This is 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. We could even see some 30s in the hill country. Yes, it'll be that cold and then tomorrow afternoon uh, significantly cooler with regards to the daytime highs uh, down to 71 for a high tomorrow afternoon. So some swings here in the temperatures. Bottom line, warm today, much cooler tomorrow morning, especially. You'll want the coat tomorrow for sure. And uh, looking at the current temperatures, there is our front. It is through Lubbock, through Amarillo. It's 30 degrees there. So some freezing temperatures possible for much of North Texas behind this front. I don't think we see that here, but again, we could see some 30s in some of the low lying spots there in the hill country. So the uh, Pretty interesting. The front is this strong in late April. In fact, there is some snow across parts of Kansas this morning and gusty winds with this too, gusting the 36 right now in Amarillo. Winds are gusting the 30 in Lubbock out of the north. That's what we have to look forward to. I think we'll see numbers pretty similar to that. Gust 30 to 35 as this front moves through tonight. And it uh, looks like uh, uh, we don't have a graphic there, but the stage two restrictions, we mentioned this earlier in the newscast. Uh, the aquifer is down quite a bit, so uh, stage two restrictions are now in place here in San Antonio for sauce customers. You can water between 7 and 11 a.m. or 7 and 11 p.m. That's sort of the change here between stage one and stage two. You can handheld water any time of day. And of course, your watering day depends on the uh, last number in your address. So just a heads up there. We need some rain. That's the bottom line to get out of some of these uh, drought situations that we're in. Forecast calls for this uh, first front that we're seeing tonight. Uh, it's not going to bring any rain, uh, but it will bring the wind, as we mentioned. It's a second storm system on Friday that actually does bring some encouraging signs, maybe for some rain, showers and storms. And by Thursday, we're starting to see a few showers, but it really is Friday where I think if we're going to see any rain, uh, that's when it's going to show up Friday afternoon, Friday evening. Problem with that is we could see some strong to severe storms, too. There's enough energy in the atmosphere, I think, to uh, get a couple strong storms going. Uh, we'll have to watch for the timing of all this. That eventually moves through and we'll get some clearing over the weekend. So 71 tomorrow, 65 Thursday, 20% chance of rain, 40% chance of showers and storms on Friday. It does clear out. We'll get mid 80s Saturday and Sunday. So busy next few days, guys. Yeah, keeps it interesting. Thank you, Justin. Yep. He said wind. He said cold front. He said snow up there in the panhandle. Did he say? But not here. Did he say polar vortex? I no. didn't hear that. No. That was nowhere in that forecast. <laughs> no, he says no. No polar vortex? No, he says okay. too soon, David. Too soon. Check it. 620. You never know. 620 is 52 degrees. And many vacation hotspots are now offering COVID-19 vaccines to visitors in order to boost tourism. Find out more in today's GMA First Look. Yeah, we'll share our home address for french fries. It's easy to be unsafe. So I gave your birth date for free parking. That's how I got this robe. Now it's easy to help protect yourself. Opt in to cyber safety at Norton.com. I still think about pizza. And I still get to eat it too. With WW, nothing's off limits. You can indulge and still lose weight. Just when you thought pizza couldn't get any better. WW Weight Watchers Reimagined. Join today for just $10 a month. Ends April 26th. With less moderate to severe eczema, you can roll up those sleeves. With Dupixent, teens saw clearer skin and significantly less itch. 
Don't use if you're allergic to Dupixin. Serious allergic reactions can occur, including anaphylaxis, which is severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems, such as eye pain or vision changes or a parasitic infection. If you take asthma medicines, don't change or stop them without talking to your doctor. So help heal your skin from within and talk to your eczema specialist about Dupixit. In this morning's GMA First Look, taking vaccine tourism to a whole new level. In the Maldives, the tourist mecca known for its crystal clear turquoise waters now wants to be known for three V's. Visit, vaccinate, vacation, offering vaccines to visitors. 1.7 million people visited the Maldives in 2019. That fell to under half a million last year. Now they are hoping people will stay for several weeks to get two doses of the vaccine while staying at one of the 500 resorts and guest houses open right now. The offer won't kick in until all of its residents are vaccinated. More than half of the country has received the vaccine. But it's not just international destinations coming up at 7 a.m. We'll tell you the places right here in America that are also considering using vaccines as the ultimate welcome gift for tourists. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. Go Spurs, go. How about the Spurs? A little win streak going after a big win over the Suns. The Spurs had another quick start in Indiana last night. DeJounte Murray, DeMar DeRozan back in the lineup, bringing the team back to full strength, and that paved the way for Derek White to come alive. The Spurs at one point built up a 21-point lead. There was some drama, but not because of the score. Patty Mills got into it with Indiana's Jakar Sampson, and Sampson headbutts Patty. Technicals assess to both teams, but Sampson was ejected. From there, the Spurs cruise to the end. Derek White finished with a game-high 25. All five starters finished in double figures. The Spurs won at 109.94. They are back to 500 now. Definitely two big wins for us. Um, we always seem to play a little better on the road for some reason, but um, good wins for us, and we just got to keep this momentum going and um, not let up. I mean, season's dwindling down, so we just got to keep battling and try to play their best basketball down the stretch. All right, so uh, now the problem for the Spurs, they come back home where they've struggled. They'll take on the heat tomorrow night. Tip off 730 at the AT&T Center. All right, if you don't know much about hockey, one thing you know is the name of Gordy Howe, widely considered one of the best players all time in that sport. He was so good, he was the nicknamed Mr. Hockey. Howe was the record holder for most NHL games played since 1980 until last night. Patrick Marlowe of the San Jose Sharks broke the long-standing record playing in game 1,768 and he's still going strong. Marlowe and the team celebrated on ice last night with plenty of congratulations to go around. So once again, a lot of people who are just your casual sports fan has heard the name Gordie Howe, but now yes. you put Marlowe on the list and there you go. Very cool, congrats. Yeah. Time now is 627 and about 52 degrees right now. Cities across the nation increasing security measures ahead of the verdict in the Chauvin murder trial. We'll hear the latest in our next half hour. It may look like just another morning commute, but for one woman, it was anything but. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. That woman in the hospital after what was a dramatic crash. I'll tell you all about it. Texas A&M researchers have identified a variant of COVID-19 that could potentially be resistant to antibodies. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta. In just a bit, we'll tell you what researchers are saying about this new variant. The jury is sequestered and entering their second day of deliberations. I'm Micah Jachi reporting from Minneapolis. Coming up, we'll take a look at closing arguments. Outside with live cam, as you can see, a little chilly out there, so the kids or yourself might need a little light jacket as you head out to school or work, and then things are going to change this afternoon and the next couple of days. Hi, good morning. Happy Tuesday. It's April 20th. Thanks for joining us. And yeah, starting off a little chilly, but yeah. uh, later, you know, I guess t-shirt weather might be appropriate. A little nicer out there. A lot of ups and downs. Mm -hmm. So it is a little cool this morning, yes, but... 80s this afternoon and then we're back in the 40s tomorrow morning with a wind chill potentially and then 70s and then we're talking thunderstorms by the end of the week. It's truly spring here in South Texas. Uh, take a look at this freeze watches and warnings up across North Texas this morning. Temperatures are really starting to dip there behind a cold front 
and they're going to get some really cold weather. Uh, we may see some 30s tomorrow morning, but no freezing weather here in South Texas, even in the Hill Country. Here's a look at the current temperatures, 34 Lubbock, 30 in Amarillo. We've been pointing that out because they are behind the front. Gusty north winds, that front should make it here by about dinner time tonight. Once it moves in, you'll know because the gusty winds will kick in and those temperatures will fall off a little bit. Let's talk rain chances now. We need some rain. Not going to get any with this front, but by Thursday, 20% chance of some showers. Then by Friday, 40% chance of showers and storms. So that's what we have to look forward to. And the forecast for today, 52, 7 o'clock, 66, 10 o'clock, noontime, 74. We're up into the 80s this afternoon. So if you do have a coat this morning, you'll be able to lose it a little bit later today. So far, the roadways have been fairly quiet. A couple of issues out there. How's it looking now, Samuel? Right now, a lot of uh, green on the map. Justin, uh, looking here at uh, our map of the San Antonio area, uh, no stalls or anything like that at the moment. But of course, we know that can change at any time as we head over to the wall here, even in Seguin and New Braunfels, San Antonio, and nothing uh, going on right now. We know one area that tends to back up is the, on the east side here, Loop 410 at uh, I-10. But right now, things look fairly good. 12 minutes each direction on 410 between I-35 and I-37. Looking at some travel times this morning, uh, coming in from the east, 29 minutes on I-10 from Seguin into downtown San Antonio, 30 minutes from the Floresville area and to the west, 24 minutes coming in on I-10 from Bernie. Here's a look at Transguy 281 at Hildebrand 35 at New Braunfels 410 at Fredericksburg Road. There had been a stalled vehicle there, but he was able to get going. And we'll have another update coming up pretty soon. David, Stephanie. Thank you, Samuel. San Antonio police blaming drowsy driving for a crash that sent a woman to the hospital. Her car flew off an elevated section of Loop 1604 at Stone Oak Parkway and landed on the street below. Katrina Weber is live where it all happened. So, Katrina, what's the uh, update on the driver? Well, police told us that she actually was alert and talking. She didn't appear to have any injuries, but they said they didn't know the extent of the injuries. That's why they urged her to go to the hospital. Uh, you can see here exactly what happened or the, re the remnants of it. A mark in the middle of the street, that's where her car landed off the, after coming off the elevated highway. It did so perfectly that it fell in the middle of the two uh, lanes of direction of the highway. Then it went up the embankment almost to the top. It came sliding back down. We have some video to show you how it looked after it landed. The front end of that car just crushed. This happened about 5 o'clock this morning. The woman told police she was heading west on Loop 1604 when she fell asleep at the wheel just before Stone Oak Parkway. And that is where her car went off the road. Again, fell off the elevated highway onto the ground below, hit an embankment, and somehow this woman was able to tell police all about it. And after she's out of the hospital, I'm sure in the future, she will have a story to tell. Reporting live in Stone Oak, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. A new variant of COVID-19 that could present a problem to the public has been identified by researchers at Texas A&M University. Sarah Costa is live downtown to explain what Aggie researchers say about the BV1 variant. Now, Sarah, could this variant be resistant to antibodies? Potentially, yes, it could, Stephanie, but researchers saying that's just based on its genetic makeup. They truly don't know the full extent of this variant, so there's really no reason to start a panic. Texas A&M researchers say they have found this variant only in one person, and that person had mild symptoms. The genome makeup of this variant suggests it could potentially be resistant to antibodies that could make it more difficult to fight this variant of the COVID-19 virus. Researchers with the university say they do not know the full significance of this variant, but it has a combination of mutations similar to other internationally notifiable variants of concern. The variant is called BV1, which stands for Brazos Valley, where it was found and is closely related to the UK variant. It was a Texas A&M student who tested positive with this variant who had mild cold like symptoms in early to mid March that never progressed to severity and were fully re resolved by April 2nd. While many U.S. labs limit sequencing to severe COVID-19 cases, Texas A&M is casting a wider net, including asymptomatic students, to find concerning variants before they cause severe illnesses. Now, A&M researchers say they will keep a close eye on this variant, and you can find all, you can read more about this story in full right now on KSAT.com. Reporting live from downtown, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. David and Stephanie.
Thank you, Sarah. The nation is waiting on the verdict in the Derek Chauvin murder trial. Both sides rested their case after closing arguments yesterday. The prosecution told jurors that this is a case against one police officer, not the entire department. Meanwhile, the defense claims Chauvin acted as a reasonable officer and was only following department protocol. ABC's Aika Jachi has the latest. Good morning. This is the moment. The jury has all the information they will ever need, and now we wait. But as we're waiting, right here in Minneapolis and the cities all across the country are preparing for possible unrest. The prosecution made their closing argument clear. This wasn't policing. This was murder. Prosecutor Steve Schleicher telling the jurors George Floyd was not a threat. Just a human, just a man lying on the pavement, being pressed upon, desperately crying out. Defense attorney Eric Nelson taking nearly three hours for his closing arguments. A reasonable police officer would, in fact, take into consideration the previous 16 minutes and 59 seconds. Their experience with the subject, the struggle that they had. Nelson doubling down, arguing Floyd's drug and heart disease was the real cause of his death. The failure of the state's experts to acknowledge any possibility, any possibility at all, that any of these other factors in any way contributed to Mr. Floyd's death defies medical science, while the nation awaits a verdict, cities all across the country prepare for possible unrest. And here in Minneapolis, 2,000 National Guard members are on standby, and the governor has asked help from Ohio and Nebraska. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Minneapolis. The judge in the trial has denied defense motion for a mistrial. The defense team had an issue with comments made by Democratic Representative Maxine Waters from California. Waters called for protesters to get, quote, more confrontational if there is not a guilty verdict. However, the judge said the opinion of the member of Congress does not matter in the case. The jury will now stay sequestered until a verdict is reached. Apple is hosting its first product event of 2021 on Tuesday. The company is expected to announce new products as well as a new operating system. Apple's new iOS is expected to help launch new privacy features, allowing users to opt in to other apps harvesting and selling personal data. CNN reports the company could also debut an AirTag, which is a Bluetooth locator to help you find lost items. And speaking of Apple, the company says it will allow Parler back on its app store. The social media site was tied to the deadly riots at the U.S. Capitol in January. Apple told federal lawmakers that it has been in substantial conversations with Parler over how it plans to moderate content on its sites before its removal from the app store. Parler was a hotbed for hate speech, Nazi imagery and conspiracy theories. A new episode of Case That Explains is out tonight, and this week the show is about one of the most widely debated items on the May ballot, Proposition B. If approved, Prop B would repeal the San Antonio Police Union's right to collectively bargain. But the issue is complicated. We're going to lay out what Prop B would and wouldn't accomplish if passed and fact check arguments for and against it. Case That Explains, Prop B will be live streamed on 7 tonight on KSET.com, the KSET TV app, and the KSET Facebook page. If you can't catch it live, you can watch the episode on demand after that at KSET.com slash explains. It is 640 and 52 degrees. Majority of Americans have less than $1,000 in a savings account. After the break, we're going to have simple ways to trick your brain into saving money. Hi, welcome back. Time now is 644. Nearly three quarters of all Americans have less than $1,000 in their savings account. And nearly half of them don't have anything at all. If you struggle to build a savings account, Mayor Hernandez has some ways to trick your brain. Is it better to pay off your debts now or save for a rainy day later? I have a f like little bit of student debt, not too much, so I'm probably going to pay it off little by little. It's necessary to pay it now, yes, why not? If you have no savings, then that's, in that's important. That's kind of a stop gap. Money experts say it's better to establish a long-term savings plan to save money for emergencies. Having no savings means you may be forced to collect new debt if financial emergencies pop up. So what can you do to save money? Adding speed bumps to spending can get your brain motivated to save. Instead of saving your payment info on online stores, set it up so you have to manually enter your credit card each time you make a purchase. 
The task of having to do so may deter you from spending the money. Set up automatic payments to your savings account so you won't have to rely on willpower or memory to save. Also keep a money diary on where your money is going. Putting it in writing and sharing your values, I think that's really the key. Finally, cash is king. People spend up to 100% more when using credit cards instead of cash. So ditch the plastic card and your bank account will thank you. And get this, neuroscientists say when you pay with a credit card, the pleasure parts of your brain light up, but when you pay with cash, the parts of the brain that deal with pain light up. Erica, on this case at 12 News. Earlier today, we had a couple of stalled vehicles, but let's go ahead and check back with Samuel King to see how the roads are looking now. Yeah, traffic building a little bit, Stephanie and David, but uh, things are looking uh, relatively okay for now. Uh, here's a, some travel times coming in from the south and west, 28 minutes coming in on 37 from the Pleasanton area, 19 minutes um, from Casterville and US 90 and 17 minutes from Lytle northbound on I-35 into downtown San Antonio. You can see the map, not much on there, uh, pretty green uh, across uh, the area here. Some delays here and there, including on uh, 410. Uh, I want to remind you, if you're traveling out in the hill country, maybe between uh, Kerrville and uh, Comfort, I covered up Kerrville there, sorry folks, but uh, <laughs> get the idea. Uh, there is some guardrail work this week there during the day beginning at 730 so in about 45 minutes. Uh, so you'll see some alternating main lane closures there on I 10 this week in the hill country. So just something to watch out for. And once you get toward Bernie, here's a look at travel times coming in right now. 24 minutes coming into downtown, 25 minutes heading outbound and then inside 1604, 12 to 13 minutes. So fairly normal times there. Here is Transguide 35 downtown at Cesar Chavez. You see traffic uh, building there but flowing well and here's another view downtown 35 at Laredo guys not too bad thank you Samuel all right so we're looking for some warmth today and then cold mm -hmm. tomorrow uh, at least tomorrow morning yeah I mean this is uh, this is a late season push of cold air and you're gonna feel it tomorrow morning for sure I mean it feels pretty chilly this morning honestly though it's 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 nice right for late April uh, sun will be up here in about 15 minutes or so 52 with the airport 50 stints and 47 Kelly 52 at Randolph uh, we're going to tack on about 30 degrees or so to these temperatures for our afternoon highs. 45 Bernie stage, 42 up there in Kerrville, 49 in Las Maples, 45 right now in Hondo, and 50 Gonzalez, 46 in Kennedy. So it's chilly no matter where you go. We've got clear skies, light winds. That's contributing to those cooler temperatures. And the skies are clear here, but you go north, and uh, there's some cloud cover behind a cold front, but also some snowfall. Snow is flying in Kansas at this hour, Missouri. Uh, even for these folks, this is this is late to be getting snow. Uh, it's going to pile up one to two inches in some cases up there. And uh, looking at the temperatures, it's 30 Amarillo, 33 Lubbock. The front is through there, starting to make its way through Midland, Abilene, and Dallas. It'll be here by dinner time. And when it moves through, temperatures will fall off a little bit, and the winds will pick up. We'll get some really gusty winds out of the north, perhaps gusting 30 to 35. So just a heads up, that's mainly tonight into early tomorrow morning. Forecast highs today in the low 80s, a little mid 80s. We could even get near 90 in a few spots. Uh, the air will be dry, though. We're not looking at uh, any humidity, really. And then by tomorrow morning, that front comes through and we'll be in the 40s to start. 45 here in San Antonio, but with those gusty north winds, it's going to feel colder than that. 41 Kerrville, 41 Rock Springs, and I wouldn't be surprised to see a few 30s in the Hill Country to start tomorrow. And we'll rebound into the 70s for highs on your Wednesday. Here's the forecast as far as rain is concerned. So no rain with this front, just windy. But as we get into Wednesday, we start to get a little more cloud cover. And then by Thursday, moisture does return fairly quickly. And we could start to see a few showers as early as Thursday morning. And that'll continue through the day on Thursday. Most anything we see during the day on Thursday will be light though. Then here comes our next storm system. Depending on timing here, I think we could see some strong storms Friday afternoon when this moves in. We're still going to keep only a 40% chance of showers and storms. There's still some difference in uh, some of the models, but I think there's a decent chance that we get at least a little bit of rain out of this. And again, we'll have to watch for the uh, chance of maybe some hail and gusty winds. But let's get a little bit closer before we start zeroing in on that. 71 Wednesday, 65 Thursday, 20% chance rain, and then a 40% shot on Friday of showers and storms. It does clear out for the weekend, so the weekend looks great, albeit a little warm, guys. Not too bad for the weekend. Thank you, Justin. Yeah. All righty, it is 649 and 52 degrees.
Vegetarian and vegan diets have been linked to weight loss and disease prevention, but how much of what you've heard about plant-based diets is true? Tomorrow on GMSA, we're going to see what's fact and fiction. Once again, back outside with a live cam. Don't forget that jacket for the kids this morning. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we are bracing for a verdict and all eyes are on Minneapolis where the jury is set to start deliberating for a second day. Who are the jurors deciding the former officer's fate? And when can we expect a decision in the George Floyd case? Also, how you can talk to your kids about all of this. That and so much more coming up right here on GMA. A woman is in the hospital after a dramatic crash here in Stono. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. That woman also left with quite a story to tell in the future. One of how she came off this elevated highway, landed on the ground below, hit the embankment, and then was still alert and able to tell police exactly what happened. Uh, this was about five o'clock this morning. The woman told police she believes she fell asleep at the wheel as she was heading west on Loop 1604 near Stone Oak Parkway. She lost control. Her car came off the elevated highway again, hit the ground, hit the embankment, but yet police say that she was alert and talking when they got to her. That woman taken to a hospital to get checked out. Police say they don't know the extent of her injuries, but they are amazed that she was able to tell them exactly what happened. Reporting from Stone Oak, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. And San Antonio police are looking for two people they say were involved in an overnight shooting. It happened in the 2400 block of Magnolia around 11 last night. That's near Wilson Boulevard and West Woodlawn Avenue. Police say a man told two people outside his house to be quiet when one of them pulled out a gun and fired at him. Officers say the bullet hit the man in the hand. He was taken to University Hospital and is expected to be okay. The two suspects then ran off. And traffic is building at Loop 410 and Jackson Keller. Let's go ahead and check in with Samuel King. Yeah, we have two lanes blocked here, uh, Stephanie. Some sort of situation just developing here in the past uh, couple of minutes or so. You see the emergency uh, vehicles uh, there uh, in this uh, area. So not sure exactly what's going on. We're going to work on it here and bring you some updates during GMA. But you can see that's definitely having an impact on traffic down to 12 miles per hour there. Uh, right at Vance Jackson between Vance Jackson and West Avenue. Everything else looking mostly fine in the area, including on 35 and I-10 uh, this morning. But again, if you are traveling eastbound on Loop 410 at Jackson Keller, you're going to encounter some slowdowns this morning, Justin. Thanks, sir. We're in the 40s and 50s right now, so it's a chilly start, but we'll be up around 84 this afternoon. Warms up quite a bit. Front moves through tonight, cools us back down. 45 to start your Wednesday, 71 for a high. Some chances of storms later this week too especially on friday guys all right definitely a jacket tomorrow morning indeed thank you yep. justin thanks for joining us we'll see you back here for good morning san antonio at nine good morning america is coming up next have a great tuesday